All right, let's look at another example. If the initial pressure of C is 0.1 atmospheres and A and B are 1 atmospheres, what would be the partial pressures of each species at equilibrium? So we set up our ice table, got your initial, your change, and your equilibrium values. So you plug in your initial values, which is 0.1 for C, 1 for A, and 1 for B. Next thing is your change, so you need to determine which way this equilibrium is going to shift to reach uh, equilibrium. So looking at the numbers, you may be inclined to say that it's going to shift to the left because of the fact that you've got less pressure on the reactant side than the product side, but you only have a 50-50 chance of being correct. Okay, The best bet is to actually calculate what that values, which way it's going to shift. That way you're making sure you have the correct signs. you got to realize it's not about just looking at those values. you got a K value and also you have the coefficients that are part of that K expression. So there's a lot of math behind the actual reason why it shifts left to right. So what we need to do is really calculate the Q value. Q is set up just like we do for K, except you plug in your initial values, not equilibrium values. So we set up our Q. Which would be your partial pressure of A times your partial pressure of B divided by your partial pressure of C squared. Okay, just as you would for your K. Plug in those values, you have 1, 1, and 0.1 squared, which gives you 100. So you look at it, Q now is greater than KP. So we're looking for a case where we need that Q to get smaller. I need Q to get smaller to equal KP to reach equilibrium. Well, looking at the expression here, PA, PB over PC squared, how can that happen? Well, that would be a case where my numerator gets smaller and my denominator gets larger. Okay, mathematically would give me a smaller Q. Well, which direction will this reaction have to go for that to happen? Well, we're looking for A and B to be consumed and C to be produced. That's going to happen if I go to the left, okay, where we're basically consuming, okay, getting smaller in size of my A and B and producing meaning increasing my C. Now you may say, okay, it's going to the left. I would have predicted that anyway with the number of moles being smaller, or, excuse me, atmosphere being smaller on the reactant side. Well, yeah, but if I was to say, oh, the KP was not 0.016, if this problem would have been written differently and say KP is 110, then your Q would have been less than K, and what would happen to the shift in? Well, I need Q to get bigger, which means I need A and B to get bigger and C to get smaller, which means it would shift to the right, which would be the opposite signs, okay, where you would have positives on your A, Bs, and negatives on your C. So the size of that K makes a difference, okay? So, yeah, you got a 50, 50, 50 chance of being correct, but if you take the time, it takes about 10 seconds to do the calculation, you can figure out which way it really is shifting and make sure you have those signs correctly. Because if you have the shift the wrong way, it can get you confused with your signs because you have like a negative negative, and you've got to make sure you be able to handle the math correctly as you work through the problem. So we said it's going to go to the left. So therefore, we now know that we're going to have pluses on the reactant side and minuses on my um, product side. Now we have to figure out our relationship. Uh, what is going to be that change? I don't know what it is, so I'm going to call it x, and I'm going to use x with the same coefficients as my balance equation. So my change in c will be a positive 2c. My change in a will be a negative a, and my change in b will be a negative, excuse me, my change in a will be a negative x, and my change in b will be a negative x. Now at equilibrium, I will now add my initials and chains together, and I come up with that at, for C at equilibrium it'd be 0.1 plus 2x, for A it'd be 1 minus x, and for B it'd be 1 minus x. Now those are my expressions, those are what I'm looking for, but I want this a numeric number, so now I gotta take these three values and figure out the x. Well these three values are related through something, which happens to be kp. So if I plug those values into my kp expression, I can solve for x and get my final answers. So KP is PA, PB over PC squared, just like Q, except now we're going to plug in the initial equilibrium expressions, equal to 0 0.016. Plug in my values, get 1 minus X, 1 minus X over 0 0.1 plus 2X. Okay, that's plugging in my equilibrium values. Okay, going back, plugging in those values into my expression. 
Okay. I then get 1 minus x squared divided by 0.1 plus 2x squared equal to 0 0.016. So here I'm trying to now solve x, so I could have to use the quadratic formula, but since this is a perfect square, I got a square term over a square term, I can get around the quadratic formula by taking the square root of both sides, since it's a perfect square. So I take the square root of both sides, and now I get 1 minus x divided by 0 0.1 plus 2x, okay, is equal to 0.126. So we lost the square terms by taking the square root, and then we took the square root of 0.16, which gets me 0.126. So now I'm going to take that 0.1 plus 2x and multiply that to both sides. If I can get rid of that in the denominator, which now gets me 1 minus x is equal to 0.126 times 0.1 plus 2x. Multiplying my uh, 0.126 times 0.1 gets me 0 0.0126. And multiplying my 0.126 times my 2x gets me 0.252x. Next, I want to combine x's on one side and numeric numbers on the other side. So I will add 1x to both sides and subtract 0.0126 on both sides, which gets me 0.9874 is equal to 1.252x. I want just x, so I divide through by that coefficient, which gets me 0.9874 divided by 1.252, which gets me 0.79. Now I got to put a unit on this since we're dealing with pressures. The pressures are atmospheres. I got to add my unit of atmospheres to my x. Now that's not my final answer. That's my x. So now I got to take that x value and plug that in to my each of my exp expressions to solve for my equilibrium pressures. So if I do that, partial pressure of A is the same as partial pressure of B, which is equal to 1 minus X, which is 1 minus 0.79, which is 0.21 atmospheres. And partial pressure C is 0.1 plus 2X, which is 0.1 plus 2 times 0.79, which is 1.68 atmospheres. Now if I plug those back into my expression, if I plug these numbers back into my expression, okay, I should get a K that's close to 0.016. Remember that uncertainty number, that last digit's uncertain, so that's going to be plus or minus on that number right there, since it's only two sig figs. Homework 21.